Hi, in today's session, we're going to understand the required privileges for user management and user creation in SAP HANA Cloud. The roles and privileges required for user creation is slightly uh, different in SAP HANA Cloud compared to the other HANA on-premise religious or the older religious. In the past, we used to have a role called user admin and that gets all the privileges required to create users and then roles can be assigned after. But in SAP HANA Cloud, there is no user admin role available for us to assign to the users. Instead, there is an object privilege that can be granted to the user or IT admin or security admin. Uh, with that object privilege, the security admin can create users after. So we're going to understand what is that object privilege and how do we assign this object privilege to the security or IT admin. After assigning this privilege, we start creating some users to test this functionality working fine. Let's take a look at that in the system. So I have my BTP uh, HANA Cloud HANA cockpit here. I'm in mean, security and user management. Got several tabs here, user management. So usually I go into user management and then start creating the users. The process to create the users is exactly same as before. So I can go and select plus and create user and then start creating the user, giving the user name and uh, the password and uh, SSO configurations and also other parameters required. But uh, it's something that we always uh, do not pay much attention it is called user group. So by default, if you don't specify anything, uh, this is going to take default user group. But in HANA Cloud, it is um, highly suggested to use uh, user groups. As a best practice in SAP HANA Cloud, uh, it is more advisable to have the users group created. For IT administration, there's, there can be one user group. And uh, for the developers, there could be another user group. And then... Um, the respective users can be added to those user groups. I'm going to talk about user group and create a couple of user groups later, um, but I will go with the default user group first and then try uh, assigning the required privileges for user administration. So I'm going to create a new uh, IT admin user or security admin user, you can call whatever. Um, so I'm going to put IT admin. I'm going to leave this to user group default. Um, I'm going to explain uh, uh, creating a new user group uh, for IT admins, um, but for now I will start with default group. And then I can choose a password. Okay. And I will choose my option not to reset, force, save it. A new IT admin user has been created. And then by default, there is no role or privilege uh, available for IT admin. And they cannot grant user admin role to the IT admin so that the IT admin can start creating users in it. So what I can do, there is a uh, standard uh, object privilege that we are going to grant to IT admin. The way it can be granted is always through the user group that's what i the the importance of user group is coming in here uh, because this particular object privileges object privilege granting can be done to the user group not to the user directly so let's uh, let's do that in the system uh, in order to do that i have to be um, logging in with db admin user and then start granting the object privilege to the IT admin user. So I'm going to access my user managed sorry, uh, database explorer. I uh, uh, I am um, with DB admin. I'm going to start uh, invoking a SQL console. And I'm going to run a, a simple grant statement to, um, to assign um, operator privilege to the user group default on the um, IT admin user. So I'm going to go to the DD database explorer. I'm going to use this syntax grant operator, grant operator on user group. So this is the, um, of the, of the privilege that I was talking about. And this privilege gets um, um, 
access or authorization to create users. So I'm going to put this to the default. So uh, this is not a best practice to assign uh, the operator privilege on user group default because uh, most of the times, if you don't specify an user group, uh, that gets to the default and we don't want that to happen. Uh, so we wanted to give this operator privilege to a specific user group. So we're going to do that in a, way in, in a minute, but I'll start with, I'll start with uh, giving these operator privileges to the default user group. And I'm saying uh, grant operator on user group default uh, to IT admin. Okay, run it. This is successfully run. Now, my IT admin user is equipped with user admin privileges. So I can log in with IT admin and start creating new users. And uh, since um, the operator grant is on default user group, uh, whoever or whatever the users that IT admin creating, by default, they go into um, to the user group uh, default. Let's, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to add another user, database user saying IT admin, and then password is that, and then instead of DB uh, admin, it will be IT admin. I'm going to use this here. And then I can create a new user. Can grab the SQL from this can grab the entire okay I have that create user um, I'm going to put as my name and then the password And then no first password change, say okay. Uh, password rules. I have to use a capital letter, at least one. And that's it. Uh, a new user uh, has been created with IT admin um, user credentials. So which means IT admin has access to create new users in the system. And then by default, this user will be created in the default user group. And I can check, um, can go back to my HANA cockpit here, and then I can refresh the screen um, to see. A new user group is created with user group default. But as I said before, this is not a best practice or having um, difficulties in the future. So what would I do? I will create some user groups and then uh, I will create or grant the access um, on the operator privilege to those user groups only. Uh, and that way I can have um, the limited access to this operator uh, based on the user groups. And then these user groups can have um, IT uh, role that can create a further users created so that I, I don't have to use DB admin anymore after. So DB admin is not something that you uh, require once you have the IT admin or any uh, super admin uh, user created in the system. So for that, I'm going back. I can create it from here, but I wanted to start with the user management uh, tab here. So I'm going to go back to the database of your security and user. You can see, you can always, you can also create the user group management from here, or you see there is a warning message for um, basic role setup. You can click on this one. It, it gets you uh, basic setup of user group is not completed. You wanted to take a look at the basic setup. You can see administration user group, basic setup completed, but you can always I just did before, but you can always start doing it. 
normal user groups, technical user groups. So when you start creating a um, user group, this is going to look like this. All the parameters that are required for user creation are set even before um, um, user creation process. They are part of your user group um, setting. So I created a user group, um, admin group, that is the name, and then created by DB admin. And this user group um, set up in with some password configurations parameters. And then I'm going to grant my uh, operator privilege to this um, to this user group. And then uh, that makes uh, the users of this user group will get the administration access or the user administration access um, thereafter. Let's take a look at how we're going to do that. I can edit it, but I just, uh, there's no requirement for uh, for me to edit. I just created the admin group. Uh, you can create a new uh, user group as well. Uh, if you don't want to go through the basic setup, you can directly create a user group from the user group management. So you can come here and then start uh, uh, a new user group directly, so which you can do it anyway. But I already have an admin uh, group, so I'm going to use it. Okay, so uh, admin group, um, uh, to be very clear, I, I can I can create a new user group so that you don't have to get confused. I'm going to call this as IT security. This is the new user group that I'm going to create. Um, and I'm going to keep only, you're going to keep only the security team people inside this user group. So it could be three or four handful of uh, group. IT security has here. And then you can change the parameters if you wanted, because whoever is going to be inside this group will get will inherit all these password policies. So I'm going to um, minimum number of characters eight. That's uh, that's good. I'm going to leave them as it as they are, and then say create users. So I'm going to create a new user in this group, or I can create a user and assign this group. When uh, when creating the user, I can choose this particular group. For, for him or her. Let's start with creating a new user. Similar to what I have done IT admin, I can create a new user called um, security admin. And here's, and there going to be a password. No password. So this is done. My security admin user is part of a user group called IT security. So in this case, uh, I'm going to grant uh, operator privileges on this user group. Let's do that. I um, I can log into DB ad. I can log into DB admin in the database explorer. Just that I already have it. And instead of grant operator on user group default, this time I'm going to do um, let's say um, IT security. Is that what the name of the, yes, that's the name of the, to the user, this time it's going to be for security admin. Okay, I'm granting the user group, operator on user group IT security to the security admin user that I just created, run it. So that my security admin user has got all the required privileges. So I can start logging in with security admin. It's just the same thing uh, what we have done for IT admin. So I'm not going to repeat it and then explain it later. Just that the only difference that we we would have noticed is that there is a specific user group that is being created for us uh, to, ma to manage uh, this user administration. And we're going to keep only the admins inside this user group. So the, the best practice is to have the, um, the users and user groups created and accordingly, so you maintain the access policies uh, on the user administration and et cetera. So this is um, 
all done now i can create another uh, oh actually i can create can log in with the um, it security admin and then just uh, give the password and then say okay and then i can start creating the users and this time whoever getting created will be created in that particular um, user group or you can explicitly maintain the user group if you have access to different user groups and you can explicitly maintain the user group by uh, setting um, set user group uh, in that in this way uh, that particular user will get created in that uh, set user group so this in this example you can see the admin 02 um, is going to be part of uh, another user group as well that is called night shift and then and, uh, by default it, this got created in operators user group and and then this is also um, uh, uh, set to have another user group for admin zero um, sorry uh, when uh, admin zero two has two uh, options um, then there is a uh, there's an option for ad, uh, the person who is in this administration of, uh, user group to choose what uh, user group it has to be created for the new users. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, that's it for the uh, user management screen. So the way you have the user administration um, role uh, in HANA Cloud is using, um, uh, is through the um, uh, operator privilege. A granting operating privilege on this user group and then to the to the user. I'm going to attach this uh, this uh, SAP help uh, URL or the the documentation to the session so that you can uh, navigate and understand uh, this, uh, the topic in detail. That's all for today's session. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.